Real life street stars. We here with Kurt McGirt, nigga. <laughs> legend, Dallas legend, producer, legendary on these motherfucking beats, man. What's up, brother? Man, what's happening? What's happening? Now, for everybody who don't know, deaf, dumb, stupid, living up under the motherfucking <laughs> rock. Because that's where you got to be at if you don't know who Kurt motherfucking McGurk is. Tell them where you're from. Ah, uh, man, I don't know where I'm from, shit. Nah, nah but uh, nah, man, I'm, man, I've been in Dallas all my life, born and raised, Oak Cliff, like, shit, this is where I'm from. I love my city. It's crazy, man, because I was I was looking back. I just you know did like Google search and uh -huh. uh, went back and and seen you and Maserati Ye putting a lot of work, man. Um, Maserati Ye, man, I felt like if if he was out, if he was still out here, he'd probably be one of the people at the forefront because he was doing yeah. doing so much it back then getting it, honestly, features. Man, it ain't no problem. <clears throat> and it, it and, and and for you, man, for you to produce, you know what I'm saying? Can you run down? Because I don't think people know. Yeah. Run down a list of people that you don't work with because you got an impressive resume, man. Uh, man, in, in Dallas, it's like, who haven't I worked with? Um, aside from that, Dolph, uh, Ace Hood, OJ the Juice, man. I do a lot of... <laughs> okay. okay. I do a lot of commercial shit now, like... That's really where I transitioned my production shit to. So it was like working with artists, a lot of that shit was kind of frustrating. So I, I focus more on like back end TV shit like that. You know what I'm saying? You got sick of these niggas, man. Let's talk about it. <laughs> Let's talk about it, man. I'm sick of these niggas. <laughs> man, um, because I do, I always do wonder about this, man. When you do a split sheet, technically it's supposed to be 50 50 <laughs> yeah but you never see the producer shining as hard as none of the artists <laughs> so what is that about like are y'all not getting y'all just do, i mean y'all definitely ain't but are y'all not getting the the money y'all are supposed to be getting why doesn't it never seem like the producer is in the same position as the artist even though y'all are the foundation of the beat well a lot of it is um a lot of it honestly deals with like when you deal with a lot of street artists, you know what I'm saying? It's a mindset that they already have from being in the streets. And a lot of times they carry that within the music as well. So it's like they want to make sure that they want to make sure that they getting everything they can. And their mind is already in hustle mode. So they trying to get the most that they can for the least that they can get out of you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Say so, that again. So it's like, shit, if... Uh, if they if they're not educated like that was one of the make, one of the biggest things for me was I had to educate myself on all the back end shit. So it was like I had to understand what was my rights and what I'm not about to give up. So when you don't understand it as a producer then it's like you'll sign anything because you know what I'm saying you want to especially dealing with like an artist that already got plenty of paper. A lot of little young producers they may go and just be like, "Oh shit, I want to shine like him. I want to get him a chain, man." I get, it's Big homies and OGs that'll go take a nigga shopping at fucking H and M or something and buy him a little bullshit chain, and he gonna give all his rights away because he wants to be down with the team. And it's like, man, fuck that. Like, once I had to understand like separating business and personal, it's like you got two different sides. Like, we cool. I'm big on I'm big on like energy. So it's like we can be working the whole session is cool. But then when that split sheet come out, I'm a different monster. Like, yeah. no, nah, let's get this shit signed. Let's get this shit dealt with. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Get this shit over with. And then it's back to, okay, let's finish these records. But, you know, that's, that's, that's really uh, the biggest part of it is motherfuckers not understanding the business and shit that a lot of time that artist just already had the paper and the producer doesn't, you know what I'm saying? Facts. That, that nigga said uh, taking them shopping at H&M. <laughs> that nigga get excited. <laughs> like, that nigga get excited. Hey, I want them to know because, you know, they, they can't see it on the camera, but I mean, you ain't hurting for, sh for, for you, you know, came in with the Louis slides, the Gucci bag. Y'all can't see it, but don't, don't believe it. Just, just, hey, hey, for real, just cause he, hey, just cause he coming with the black tee don't mean a nigga ain't living hey, right. Hey, hey, look, look. No. Yeah, they, 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 they yeah, them the ones you, that, that ain't the ones you be like, man, I'm gonna get them next time. <laughs> that ain't the, that ain't the outlet ones. Yeah. yeah. Now, I do want to ask. You said you got frustrated. What was the most frustrating situation that, without naming an artist, or fuck, if you want to name them, name them. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the most frustrating situation you got yourself in, just as the producer to the artist who Philly was, you know, that 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 shit. Um, shoot. I would say the most frustrating thing that I had to deal with was in my earlier stage with not understanding the business and, 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 and 
really trusting management to handle my business and management didn't understand the business either. So that was like, it was, it's like, you know, you trust in your management and my management was like, it's like family, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, we was in this shit together, but it was just like, hey, you're going to be my manager because, you know what I'm saying, you know how to talk money. I don't. I just want to create. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, that yeah, was right. where. And the crazy, I don't want to cut you off, but yeah, it's yeah. crazy. Like, a nigga could be like, man, I did not nigga was <laughs> but 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 and and, and 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 I won't say that it was necessarily a, a, a like the manager trying to fuck me over because it, it wasn't. It just was literally like we neither one nobody knew the business. You know what I'm saying? So we got into a situation where it was like, oh shit! Now we're with a placement with a very well known artist and a well known label, and this just can make us some money. And we didn't fucking know what to do. We didn't try to go get a lawyer. It was like nothing. So I just was like. Hey, go handle that. You know, that shit, that, that's your side. I did the creating, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's crazy because when I, like, with this placement, this is, this is how I, like, I've always known that, like, my music is, is what's going to be the ticket. You know what I'm saying? I won't say always, but, like, once I start doing music, I knew it was going to be the ticket. I was working at a racetrack, and um, I got the call that was like, hey, we need the track outs. I had just clocked into my job. I told my manager, look, I need to go back home to send this track. And I had a look in my eyes, like, cause they, like any job I went to, they knew I did music. So I, I looked him in, in, in his eyes. I'm like, I gotta go. <laughs> like he looked at me like I had a kid finna be born or something. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I got to go. Like, I got, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so he was like, just come back in when you can, you know? Man, I, I flew home. I, I was driving a 96 Chrysler Series. That bitch was raggedy. <laughs> I, when I say flu, I mean I was going like 65 because that's fast that bitch could go for it, start shaking. So I'm my shit the whole way home. I'll get there. I'm rushing to send the track out and shit. So I'm like excited. I get back to work. I'm in my in my head, I'm like, man, fuck this job. <laughs> I'm not gonna do shit else. I got this place with man. We we on the way. Nah, I was still working for the next two, three years, but uh, you know what I'm saying? So so that that was it was frustrating under like but I'm glad that I went through that learning process of not knowing the business in the early stages than to have some huge shit where it's like Drake or somebody come and then you got to deal with with cash money. And it's like, ah, oh, you know, you getting, you know, what I'm saying you finna get fucked over horrendously, you know what I'm saying? But if you know your business, you won't get fucked that bad. But not knowing the business, oh, you shit, you might as well give me track for free. You know what I'm saying? I just want you to know that Maserati 800 is one of my favorite tracks used by you. I'm talking about. I rode to that bitch for a whole year. Wow. Hundreds. Hundreds. Yeah. Hundreds. <laughs> Landlords know I'm trapped. So yeah. I pay a <laughs> but uh, past that, man. So, um, and that, that leads to my next question. You be, you know, you produce for a lot of street music. Mm -hmm. And I mean, y'all done have some epic projects. I know, especially even you with uh, Maserati J. Yeah. Man, y'all be making some magic. But uh, does it frustrate you like when you work with certain street dudes and you know they still be active and then right when y'all got some shit that's probably going to change, change the, 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 the dynamic of the streets, they just be gone? It does. Because cause that, was, that, was, that was pretty much the situation with Ye. Like, we was there. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I've always stayed behind the scenes. You know what I'm saying? Like, always. But it was just me and him. Like, it wasn't no whole street. It wasn't no management team. It was me and him. I told him, rap, bro. Just rap. You know what I'm saying? I handled this nigga emails. I handled whatever, trying to book shows. I handled any other exterior studios. I traveled wherever he needed me to. I'm in every session he's in. It was like, I handled everything on the back end. Getting his music registered, all that shit. It was like, I'm a, I, pretty much. I mean, I was manager, producer engineer, shit, everything, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, I had to handle all of that. And one of the things that, that kind of sucked was that with him just getting into rap, he didn't understand that this isn't the norm. You know what I'm saying? Like, this ain't what your producer's supposed to do. Like, right. so it was like, <laughs> but I knew I, I didn't care, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, man, I'm gonna help whatever way I can to make sure that this shit overall works because he blow, we blow, you know what I'm saying? And we was tight, you know what I'm saying? Like, outside of just music, like, we was tight, you know what I'm saying? Like, 
we would ride around and shit. Like he would call me just on personal shit, you know what I'm saying, to, to, to talk. Cause sometimes, like that's one thing I realized is like a lot of street niggas, like they trust be fucked. So it's like, they need the regular guy that they can, man, let me pull up and sit down and just like not worry about shit for an hour. You know, let me come over here and take a nap real quick. Cause I know nobody know where you at and we just gonna be over here, you know what I'm saying? So it was like, it really built into a brotherhood. But right before he got hit, like, we was talking to labels. We was like really, really close to doing some shit with free bands. We had already met with them in Atlanta and shit. So it was like the situation was there. And this was after he had uh he had brought future to the city. So it was like it was already the, the look was there. So it was like, man, I knew we was close. And then when that shit happened, like I literally was lost for like a year. Cause I was like, what do I do? I done put all my time into him and I don't got no other artists I'm really fucking with like that. It just was like, damn, bro, I don't, I just, I literally didn't know what to do. I just was stuck. So I literally went pretty much all 2017 just kind of floating by, you know what I'm saying? And you know, it's crazy because, you know, you see the, you see Asian Doll, mm -hmm. you see Cuban, you see just everything that comes after that. You're like, man, yeah. like it's, we was in the mix of all of this greatness. Yeah. So I do want to ask you as far as the, um, the producer artist dichotomy. Whenever you get an artist and a producer that just ride it till, when you know years and years, you have your Timberlands, Missy, mm -hmm. um, you have your your Swiss and your DMX, you know, y'all just ride together. Yeah. Um, do you feel that's something that artists should do as far as when it comes to finding a dope producer when y'all are creating something that you that both y'all feel is special? Hell yeah. That just you know the album the album should be huh, like us kind of dueling it out. Yeah. Making music. Do you feel that should be some way? I, I feel like that's the best way. If you look at, if you look at any artist that's had big success, and I won't just say every, every, but the majority of artists that done had big success, they've had that producer. Because when an artist has the producer, they create the sound. Now the sound, which today we call the wave, everybody's chasing after that wave. But that artist is at the, he's going to be the one that's riding at the top of it. Nobody else can really ride the wave the way the artist can. So it's like, when you build that sound, I mean, look at like the baby and Jetson. Look at at, at uh, 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 Lil Baby and, and and Quay. You know what I'm saying? Look at Gunna and Weezy. You know what I'm saying? It's like they all have that sound. So when you can have a producer and an artist, and they can actually build together and kind of step outside of the norm, that's when they create that sound, and everybody else is trying to catch that wave from them. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. When I was watching the No Limit documentary. It was, uh, they said No Limit pretty much, the, the, the demise of No Limit Records was when Beats by the Pound left. It's yeah. like, once your sound left, yeah. it's like now you're chasing other sounds and doing other things that doesn't feel familiar mm -hmm. with what, you know, the fans feel. So I definitely feel that. Yeah. I do want to ask you this. Um, certain artists, when they get big, it's like they abandon their whole production team and go to like a whole <laughs> different side of the, like they'll go to Atlanta producers or West Coast producers or whatever. Yeah. Like, what is that about? Like, I, I've never understood that. If you've built a sound up and then you just abandon your sound. Um, like, Slim Thug did it when he went to Neptunes. He yeah. had the Down South thing and then he just went Neptunes. And it was weird. Yeah. You know. Really, a lot of it is, it, it goes both ways. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you got the artist's ego that gets up there. And the artist's, is, the artist's ego is there. And also the label is in their ear. That's like, because a lot of times the artist will make a big fucking record. Once they make that big ass record, the label is like, and we don't know if this little producer guy, you know, can can make another one of those. We got relationships. We need to go pay a hundred thousand dollars for this and this and this and get you these beats and all this and that. And there's no chemistry there. You're just literally dragging this artist to X, Y, and Z producer just because they got a name. And it's like that shit don't work. You got to stick with the chemistry. But then also a lot of the shit comes from the back end too because now that that producer pretty much has a name because he's attached to that record. That producer is like, all right, you making money. I'm going to get the producer most time will get a little publishing deal, which they don't always be what they need to be. But the producer get a publishing deal. The artist has his record deal. And so now there's a hell of a lot more business that's involved as opposed to just them cooking up. So now it's like, well, hey, you need to tell the label that they need to be paying me twenty thousand dollars a beat. And he like, nigga, you was giving me beats for thirty dollars off of uh, Keith yeah. Pope, like yeah. the fuck. So it's it's it goes on both ends. It's just a lot of ego shit. Now now, 
I want you to answer me this honestly. Mm-hmm. When you turn and you put out your first rap visual, you as an artist yourself, yeah. do you feel like you got the support from the people that, do you feel like you got the support you deserve? Because I do feel like your shit was completely slept on and you were really saying some raw shit, but I do think because you're a producer, mm-hmm. some people automatically put you in their box like, oh, well, he's a producer. Yeah. Not, and we're not going to take him all the way serious as a rapper, even though he's rapping his ass off. Yeah. So do you think that you got the love that you deserve? I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a say this, and I'm going to say this boldly, and I'm going to say this with my chest. I'm the most talented fucking artist in DFW, period. Boom. <clears throat> Boom. Real life street stars. You heard it here. And, I mean, this can, you know, this ain't no beefing, it ain't no dissing, it ain't none of that. It's, if we're going to talk raw fucking talent, oh. I'm the best. You want to talk lyrics? Put me up there with anybody. I get on the mic with anybody. You want to talk about harmonizing melodies? Put me in the mic with anybody. I'm there. You want to talk about producers in the city? I'm up there. My name's always been up there. You want to talk about engineering in the city? My mix is better than a lot of the top engineers in the city. I've had Grammy Award winning producers, I mean, Grammy Award winning engineers in the city tell me, damn, you got a pretty good mix. Well, hey, shit, I've been doing something right. So you take all of that, combine that shit, as far as overall most talented person in DFW, it's me. And I don't give a fuck what nobody say. But more on the point of, do I feel like they really gave me the respect as an artist? In a way, yes, and in a way, no. Um, in a way, yes, because I didn't see anybody at all like try to just flat out be like, oh, you trash and nothing like that. Like nobody was like, you yeah. suck. But the attention that Really, I'd say the attention wasn't there from the people that I needed it to. Yeah. And a lot of that is just really, it's, it's with me, it's just really just working and I gotta stay more consistent on social media and shit like that. So um, it's a work in progress. This is my first year taking this shit serious as an artist. So it's like, it's a work, you know, I'm not really mad at it. You feel like some kind of life traumatizing event had to happen for you to blow? It seemed like that'd be the, the, the secret code to, you know, <laughs> Kanye West, he was a producer. No one took him serious. Yeah. Till Through the Wire came out. And they're like, okay, now, we're, now we see you. Do you feel like something has to happen? Um, or they, it should, you know, they just going to see this. They going to see this shit regardless, naturally. Yeah. I feel like, honestly, I feel like the statement I just made is going to cause a lot of controversy and stir up a lot of shit. I don't give and a fuck. And we going to clip it, too. That's cool. I don't, man. <laughs> blow it, zoom in on my face and everything. I don't give a fuck. Like, so that's it. <laughs> so that is, that's like, I feel like it takes shit like this to where people get to see me. People get to see me talk my shit. People get to see who I am and then be like, who the fuck is this? You know what I'm saying? Who the hell is this nigga saying he the best? Okay, you're going to go check Let's me go out. Go Google. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Pull me up. And once you do, you really can't deny it. You can't be like, Nah, that nigga ain't everybody. Cause I've I've had people in the comments and and like my Facebook shit, and it'd be a whole other person that done shared my shit. Like, man, this nigga the best. And then somebody like, hell no, nah. and they like, and they drop a link, and then the person come back. Damn, you know what? You right, bro. Yeah. That, that, I was trying to troll. I'm not gonna lie. I was even sleep on the March Madness. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I, I went through and listened to it. I said, oh, this nigga snapping on all these <laughs> like, you, metaphors and everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um. But with that being said, you know, now that you're wearing the artist hat, yeah. do you see, what, what do you see from the artist's perspective? Because um, are you just rapping to all your beats or are you rapping to other people's beats? Because mm. the March Madness was other people's beats. Yeah. So for you, did that help you as a producer, being yeah. an artist um, and, and being in the limelight now? Now you're doing interviews from yeah. being behind the scenes. Now you're kind of coming out. It's, it's helped a lot because um, my whole thing was that I always wanted to be a writer. So it was like, I want to, I still want to stay behind the scenes. So it's like, worst case scenario for me, I get a one hit wonder and the industry knows I can write and I, and I stay behind the scenes writing. I'm cool with that. You know what I'm saying? If I have Drake's success, I'm cool with that too as an artist. But it was like, with March Madness, I wanted to do some shit that hasn't been done. You know what I'm saying? Especially here in the city. Like nobody went 31 days in a row. March Madness, I did that shit all by myself. Like COVID had just hit. I had just bought my camera. I set that shit up. I set my lighting up. So I recorded my own self, mixed master my own self, filmed it, literally learned how to edit on some free software my damn self because I didn't have nobody else to rely on. And I was like, it was days I was like, man, I don't know if I'm gonna make it, but I stuck through that shit and I got it done. 31 days in a row, 31 videos in a row. And I'm like, who else, who else done it? You know what I'm saying? So that, that set a statement for me, you know what I'm saying? And it was more for me to prove to myself, but it was also to prove to the city, like, all right, I'm here. You know what I'm saying? That was my welcoming party like all right 
now y'all gonna take me serious as an artist. You know what I'm saying? You, you got you got 31 days of content in a row. Are we gonna be serious with me as an artist? You know what I'm saying? So now it's really like dropping records, just doing doing you know, just really being more vocal, being being more seen, being more active on social media. Cause I've I've always been the guy that just I don't give a fuck what nobody thinks about me. Like I don't give a fuck about this is literally me every day. You could see me at a goddamn funeral. I'm probably gonna have this on. Like literally a three dollar shirt, some Adidas pants. I got like literally every color Adidas nah, pants. Nah. Hey, yeah, hey, you goddamn right. <laughs> I got a whole line of fucking designer slides and and a the expensive ass back. That's gonna be me every day. And it's like I see visions for it. It's like hey, when I get big. I carry an image. Shit, it's gonna be backpack companies that's gonna want me to rock, rock their backpack. I can create my own backpack. It's gonna be slides companies that, like, I'm literally in slides like 300 days a year. Like, it'd be cold as shit. I'd be out in slides. People are like, you crazy. I got a whole P coat on with some goddamn slides, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but no, nah, I mean, it's, it's it, this artist shit, it's, it's, it's hard work, you know what I'm saying? Because you have to stay in the limelight and you have to continue to work. I swear, you know brother, if you just got like a chain real quick, like you get a chain and like one video with the chain with the chain on, you'll be good. Cause that's all this motherfucker care about. <laughs> but, <laughs> but 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 <laughs> and, and 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 to a certain extent, yeah. But it's like, cause my thing is, cause I rap about it in songs and stuff like that. Like it was uh like one of the last shits I dropped. I was like, um, I said, uh uh uh, I don't even got time to make. Uh, damn, what did I say? I don't even got time to play games in this bitch. I'm trying to make dollars so that I can make change in this bitch. I'm buying real estate while you trying to buy chains in this bitch. You window shopping, I'm dropping cash for a range in this bitch. So it's like, that's the type of shit I talk about. And you like, did also say you made 100000 off of, off, of, <laughs> off of real estate. <laughs> yeah, let me so, chop it up. You know, so I don't, so I'm not gonna, like, I, I'm not gonna tell, I, I work with kids a lot. You know what I'm saying? So like, I coach basketball, I coach elementary basketball. So it's like, I don't want, I'm not gonna tell the kids, hey, go get, when you get your 50,000, you could buy a chain like me. No, fuck that. When you get 50,000, let me show you how to flip it. How many of them kids' mamas try to throw you to pee, man? Coach McGurk. Yeah, I get, I get hit with that. You, you know, ever hit like, one? Be they, honest, bro. When they walk, when they walk by you and then they, they hit you with that stop. Oh, you smell good. And it's like, oh, here we go. You know my son, right? No. <laughs> I don't care about you. I, I'm here to coach. Like, God damn, I'm trying to see the court. But yeah, you, it comes with the territory, man. So let's talk about um, what are you working on now? March Madness, if y'all haven't checked that out, make sure y'all do. This nigga is going crazy on every track, honestly. Yeah. Uh, but what are you working on present day? Um, and right. you have no excuse because it's Corona season. You better come hard, nigga. Uh, we, I'm on every nigga ass that don't drop for us. <laughs> what the fuck would you do? Well, I've um, I actually got I got a whole EP and a whole album done already. Um, EP is called Luca. Like Vandross? Luca. Like yeah, 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 yeah. Luca for three. Yeah. So I got um, so I got the the EP called Luca. My album is called Free Throw. Um, everything, I, all my projects are gonna be like basketball related, just that's dope, cause that's dope. I'm a hooper, you know what I'm saying. So it's like that's 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 my shit. Like, I wish we could still be talking about the Mavericks right now to this day. <laughs> bless you, bless you. But uh, yeah, they they man, referees fucked them over. Uh, but uh, but now I'm working on. I got Luca finished. I got um, I got Free Throw finished. Um. I've actually got a record coming out on the 18th this month, uh, September 18th. I got a record coming out called Journey. Mm. This is um, this is really the first record that I'm. This is the first I consider this like my first single because I mean I got some records I put out that's on streaming and shit like that. A lot of it was more trial and error shit, but this like this record Journey is like really me, like yeah. who I want to be as an artist. So. Like I've shown people I can do the rap and shit. Like I got bars and all this, but this is me as an artist. So it's like my sound is like Travis Scott, Don Tolliver, like St. John, Post Malone. Like that's the shit I want to do. So it's like I'm trying to make hits. You know there what I'm you. saying? Like I, I, could, I could say I've proved that I can give you bars. I do that shit for fun. But my music, music, yeah, nah. We, I'm, I'm trying to get Grammys. When you produce, you engineer. I mean, you, you're into the production yeah. of music. You know what I'm saying? 
all facets. So definitely journey, man. We're gonna be looking out for that right when this album drop. I am curious on your opinion on Dallas's uh position as far as producers. What would you rank Dallas at? Producing quality producer. Man, like honestly, like as far as Dallas's production quality, we way up there. Like, way, like we gotta be top three. I mean, people, it's just we we have a lot of producers. We got a lot of producers that done did big shit that people just don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, shout out Lone Star. Like, Lone Star is on fucking Eminem's project. You know what I'm saying? But Lone Star kind of like, we just saying like, Lone Star just be chilling. He go for his jog every day, post a picture of that. He posts, uh, thank you God every day. And he chilling, you know what I'm saying? He's, he's not trying to be in the limelight. So it's like, we don't have all the, 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 the you know what I'm saying, producers that's just trying to be popping. But I mean, we got, we got some big sounding motherfuckers out here that, 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 yeah, oh God. I mean, Jay White is, is, it's like with as many hits as Jay White got under his belt, he carrying Dallas alone. You know what I'm saying? So it's like that ought to carry Dallas itself, all the number ones he got. But uh, I mean, it's so many producers, like, and, and even we got younger producers that's, that's linking up with the younger artists. Like, I'm not familiar with a lot of them, but I know they're there. You know what I'm saying? That, that they really helping to carry DFW as a whole, I'll say. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, we, we up there. I, I give Dallas top three. Honestly, I mean, uh, shit. You gonna go? You gonna go with some Atlanta people just because they always got a wave? You gonna go with LA just because LA has big motherfuckers? But you can't really say LA because LA people ain't from LA. Yeah, it's LA yeah. So <laughs> it's like yeah, LA is a hub. But as far as like raw ass talent from the city, man, DFW got the shit. S one, shout out S one. I mean shit. And man, it's it's so many out here, man. Shit, Sean on the beat, Keys on the track, Throw it on the beat. Uh, man, there's so many producers. Uh, uh, what's his name? Young Baller. Uh, uh, Quinn Beach, Young Star. I mean, it, it, all day. I mean, it's people that's getting placements. Like, yeah, like people been getting. They, we been getting placements out here. You know what I'm saying? It's just. Shit, we ain't, we just don't talk about it. It's a lot of producers getting money out here. You know what I'm saying? So, it's a lot of six-figure producers that's chilling. One question before we get out of here. Yeah. The, the state of Texas rap scene right now has grown to so much to where now the women seem to be taking over. Is there any women that you would like to, you know, get in the boot, get in and stew with, make a project with? Um... Business wise, all of them, shit. Right. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but um but but preferably, um one in particular I was say we've been supposed to work. Uh Miss G, she dope as fuck. Um G is dope. I also want to work with I re like I really want to work with all of them, you know what I'm saying? Love and Chanting, she she dope as hell. Um I mean Erica Banks is doing her thing like crazy, you know what I'm saying? Shout out right. Shout out Erica Banks, 1501. Like, she doing her thing like crazy. Uh, I'd love to work with her because she, she got bars. Like, she hard, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I mean, shit, it's, it's a lot of them, you know what I'm saying? I really did. I was like, I didn't want to say their names together because I know they had their little situation. But it's business is business. Like, they, dope, they both dope fucking artists. I don't, you know what I'm saying? It is what it is. So, salute to both of them. Um, but, I mean, shit, it's, 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 it's a few other artists I can't think of off top, you know what I'm saying, that I just... I love to rock with, but I mean, if I'm just like, man, if 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 you got the dedication and you want to work, I'm I'm down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I want to build. You know what I'm saying? You got any shout outs? Ah oh, man, uh, shit. <laughs> I, I I think I, that that's part something you're supposed to like think of beforehand. <laughs> like like, all right, I was shout, but um, shout out to God, obviously. Amen. Um, shout out to my mom. Shout out to my dad. Um, I'm gonna just give a blanket shout to my family because my family is really like my people's people's, you know what I'm saying? Right. Shout out to my manager, Charles. Uh, he couldn't make it right tonight, but shit, he, he's here with me in spirit, as they say. So uh, shout out my boy, Charles, uh, my boy, Chris, my boy, Spitter. That's my motherfucking nigga to the day I die. Um, man, shout out, uh, shit, rest in peace, these drugs. I, I man, gotta, gotta give it to. Drugs. I got two on his latest project. Um, man, shout out Maserati J. That's my dog. Man, tell us about that new project, man. Y'all, you on any? You on that, right? You on the new one, right? Yeah. 
Hell yeah. What what can we expect? Cause I fuck I fuck with my I fuck with Jay, man. I really want to. I really feel like he got the ability to blow this motherfucker up. Man, Jay, and I feel hard. like y'all do good. Y'all make magic. You know what I'm saying? Jay, Jay, I'm like the same way me and Jay was working. That's how me and Jay is. I've been knowing Jay since kindergarten. Like, wow. yeah, that's I put it like like people people look at me and hear me talking shit and they be like this nigga's a suburb nigga. Nah, nigga, I went to BF Durrell. I went to Lisbon. I went to Bow Story. I graduated from Sox. So. Nah, I'm from the cliff. Like, <laughs> wasn't no living in the, nah, I lived in the cliff the whole fucking time. So, uh, but I've been knowing Jay since kindergarten. So it was like, when that nigga wanted to rap, it was like really no other choice but to come to me. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, the chemistry had been there, you know what I'm saying? And he was, I would always see him around, you know what I'm saying? When I would be with Ye, cause shit, they from the same place. And so it was like, once he was like, bro, I really want to try this rap shit. I was like, well, you know where I'm at. Like, ain't it ain't ain't nothing changed from yay high. Like, nigga, I'm still here. So we got to work and we got to rocking. But this new project is is man, it's crazy. Like, and we got we got even more shit in store. But man, he he's working his ass off. And I mean, I expect next year like the elevation. Like, we are gonna really really see it. You know what I'm saying? Man, man. For anybody want to get in contact with you for any bookings or features, how would they do that? Man, um, contact my manager, Charles Anthony. Um, just, huh? Different man. <laughs> <laughs> the same one. <laughs> uh, you can you can you can hit me at uh, mgmt at kurtmcgur eight hundred eight dot com. That's where I we take all inquiries. He handles all that shit. Again, that's basically management and abbreviation. So MGMT at KurtMcGurt808.com. Anything you need, beats, interviews, verses, writing, whatever, all that shit. Get it there. We'll handle it. Man, I just, man, it's so, it's so legendary, bro, because I can remember as, as a youngin, man, Pulling up your shit on sound click, bro, and freestyling to it, bro. <laughs> so, bro, just to, you know what I'm saying, niggas don't even understand, bro, how legendary you are at your, your place in the city. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Hurt motherfucking McGirt <laughs> in this bitch. <laughs> you are a real life street yeah. star. Yo, yo. Shout out to Real Street Stars, nigga. Moolah. Hey.